My name's Ali Walsh. I own the Bristol Bakehouse. We specialise in gluten-free and vegan cakes. That means that we can cater for a wide range of diets and we also do wedding cakes, so do lots of sugar craft and all the special things that make that perfect day possible. Free From Isles have expanded throughout the UK and internationally. We've got new allergen laws that have come in which mean that every restaurant or cafe has to be able to provide information about whether their products are gluten-free or if they have egg in or dairy and so forth. And people that come to the Bristol Bake House know that they are coming to a gluten-free environment so they don't have to worry about cross-contamination. They know because I'm celiac that I know exactly what I'm talking about. I've had talks with people from vegan lifestyle associations who are very comfortable with the vegan produce that we do. So I think we cover a, a wide range of niches and actually those niches are getting bigger and bigger. The free from market has been estimated to be 500 million this year in the UK alone. So I think we're looking at a very bright future. I'm having part of the bakehouse converted so that people who want to do tastings or have cake decorating classes can come to the bakehouse itself. And long term, I would like to franchise out the bakehouse so that all over the UK, there are small bakehouses where people can go for gluten-free and vegan cake. My name is Roger Saul. I'm the owner of Sharpham Park. In about 2004, I bought the farm around my house where I'd lived for a long time. And I thought, well, what can I do with this land that was going to be constructive? And I looked at recreating it as a, a 300 acre deer park, which it would have been back in the 1500s, and try and make it organic. So I did a mixed economy, red deer, sheep, cattle, and a mystery ingredient, which was spelt tasted it and the difference was amazing. Lovely nutty taste and learned some huge nutritional benefits. Slow release energy, high fiber, um, some wonderful statistics on how it can help diabetes and all sorts of other things. And ended up selling to Waitrose and other key food shops around the country, exported it. And in the last year, I've written a spelt recipe book. I've had various explorers like Ranulf Fines and Rosie Stanza who have actually come to me and said, could I take it to the North or South Pole and use it as my slow release energy, which means I can go further pulling my sled and they swear by it, which is amazing. I'm Martin Thatcher, I'm representing Thatcher Cider and I'm very proud to say I'm fourth generation cider maker. Thatcher Cider was started in 1904 by my great grandfather. He sold his cider to some of the local people, but the main reason he made cider was probably to pay his farm workers and for himself to drink. I think people have become more discerning about the type of food and drinks they have. And the great thing about cider, it has a great heritage provenance and the way it's made fits with the current way of thinking that people want more natural and more authentic drinks. In some ways we've had to change our approach because we now employ 130 people and when I started work 25 years ago we only employed six. But again for us it's very important to maintain the family values that uh, my great grandfather, grandfather and father have instilled in the business about it is a family business, we still do things how a family business do it, uh, decisions are still made around the kitchen table and um, again, we always come back to it is about the quality of apples that uh, we have that makes our cider so great. Mm -hmm.